Two beautiful women revealing the sharp divide over the Ground Zero Mosque. Katie Couric joining the chorus of media and political elites who seem to believe that questioning the motives behind the mosque amounts to Islamophobia. Is a debate to be had about the sensitivity of building this center so close to Ground Zero, but we cannot let fear and rage tear down the towers of our core American values. Meanwhile, Dearborn, Michigan's Rima Faki is the first Muslim crowned Miss USA, and she apparently understands the raw feelings stirred up by 9-11 attacks. Listen to what she told Extra. We should be more concerned on the tragedy than anything on religion. It shouldn't be very close to the World Trade Center. So is there any resolution to this conflict? Here to weigh in, former federal prosecutor Andrew McCarthy and Dawood Kringle, an imam with the New York City Department of Corrections. Gentlemen, great to see you. Good to see you, thanks, Dave. Thanks to both of you for, for coming us. in. All right, uh, there are questions about the mosque. There are questions about the guy who, who's going to be running it, the center, the Islamic Center, and the backers of this thing. Let's deal with each of them. The mosque, first of all, according to the Quran, uh, Allah made the earth spacious, right? There are a lot of places oh, where this mosque one. could go. It is an old one, right? It goes yeah. back to the Quran. Mm -hmm. Why not move it? Well, um, first of all, I'd like to address the idea of... Uh, we the, don't have time to do the first of all. We've got to just focus okay. on the questions because we've got two guys. Okay. Why there? Uh, the uh, location has within it the potential to diffuse the uh, uh, quote-unquote Islamophobia by uh, actually giving a tangible manifestation and demonstration of the principles, the spiritual principles of Islam as uh, applied to uh, uh, everybody's lives. The um, fear that people have of Islam, I've noticed, and believe me, I've talked to a lot of people, is uh, rooted um, in ignorance in a lot of ways. Uh, and, uh, the only way to, uh, to uh, diffuse that would be to uh, show them, you know, not just pay it lip service, but uh, to actually live it, to manifest it, to, to uh, uh, show them something that they can uh, look at. But so far, Andy, it's had exactly the opposite effect. Well, it has inflamed it, tensions even more. That's exactly right. If your idea is to build bridges and to make a gesture of ecumenical sensitivity, uh, the last thing you would do would would be to divide the way this is divided. And I keep coming back to what happened with the Carmelite nuns at Auschwitz. You know, they were right. going to have a they were going to have a nunnery, I believe it was, right in the outskirts exactly of Auschwitz, right. and they 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 fought it for a while, but then eventually they said, "Look, sensitivities have grown too much. We're pulling out." Right. Isn't and it time for the Islamic Center to do the same? I think it's time for for. Muslims to to do the same, to, and and I think a number of them have. There's a divide, I think. Uh, it's certainly something that was was clear to us doing the terrorism prosecutions in the 90s. You had patriotic Muslims without whom we could not have won those cases. For those who don't know, you were the prosecutor, the blind sheikh. You got a you got a prosecution in that case. Right. Those are for events before 9/11, but similar terrorist events. And you could not have prosecuted these guys without help from decent, honest Muslim American citizens. Absolutely right. But there was a, a real divide between them and the leadership of many of the mosques and community All centers. Right, let's, let's move to that point, because that's a good point. Some people say that, that most Muslim Americans have, have no interest in terrorism whatsoever, and, and that they Islam are... Islam forbids terrorism. But, but we blank. know that well, some, some Islamic fanatics have, have gone against that forbidden te uh, sect mm -hmm. or, or testament. In, and therefore in, in they the are Quran. no longer can be considered Islamic. They could be Muslim terrorists, but there really is no such thing technically as Islamic terrorism. But the fact is, is that there are people who in their community are being led by individuals that are close, that believe, for example, that Hamas is not a terrorist organization. Do you believe Hamas is a terrorist organization? I would... Uh, That's not I a hard question. Hold on yeah. a second. No, 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 second. no, no, no. I, um, is Hamas a terrorist organization? A simple question. I believe that there's people uh, that's connected with Hamas that uh, uh, advocate terrorism. Is Hamas, though, a terrorist organization, as the State Department says it is? I believe that, the pe that people that, uh, that uh, exist on the fringe of there, Hamas is a political party that's, uh, that grew out of, uh, out of uh, what happened to uh, Palestine. 
obviously there's going to be people that are, uh, that are going to uh, twist up uh, uh, the religion in order to serve their political okay, but, agendas. But the, the pro part of the problem is with the guy who's, who's involved with this mosque, he did the same dancing around the question we just heard. And with all due respect, you, were dancing, you wouldn't answer directly whether Hamas is a terrorist organization as defined by the State Department. And this is why and Americans... The, the head of the mosque won't either. This is why Americans have a, a severe problem. Uh, the, the imam just said Islam forbids terrorism, and I take him at his word that he sincerely believes that. But when you say at one point um, we forbid terrorism, and then you're asked, is a terrorist organization a terrorist organization, and you can't answer that question, what that tells people is that what we call terrorism is often called something else. So that, for example, Hamas will say that what it engages in isn't really terrorism, it's resistance. So therefore, I can look you in the eye and say Islam forbids terrorism and still support Hamas. That's the kind of games that people... I got, are, they're giving me the rap. They gave it to me two minutes ago, but I've got to give you the last word. Go ahead. Okay. Um, the uh, Islamic Center at uh, 51 Park Place, as I said, it... it uh, has the possibility and the very real probability of, uh, of uh, building these bridges between these uh, uh, different communities. I uh, knew Imam Faisal al Raouf for years. I know these people for a long time, and I've been uh, speaking to the people who were uh, opponents to this. And uh, the idea of sitting down and communicating with them and demonstrating what Islam really is. And uh, on the other hand, going into uh, some of the uh, other communities, the Islamic uh, uh, Muslim populations that may be inclined towards radical thought, um, it's the same thing. You know, we communicate with them. I teach them their religion. I do this in the prisons all the time and uh, diffuse yeah. that sort of thought before it can actually grow into a violent Well, you're act. talking now. We're talking. We're on different, different uh, corners of the divide here. We invite you both to come back and talk about it some more if you wouldn't mind. Thanks, David. Appreciate Thank you. you both coming back. Coming up on deck, the road to retirement.